I see that it says meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see if I can do both. Um, Lord, let me put this on vibrate some. <laughs> can you see the PowerPoint? Yes, I can see the PowerPoint. Right, I see it gives us view options to zoom ratio, high video request. We're, remote. we're live. Okay. Lamisha, we're good. Live on Facebook on your page. It just popped up. It's on. Um, yeah. All right. So you're good to go, Lamisha. Okay. Good morning, everyone. We are so very excited that you have joined us this morning for our second virtual town hall series. We are so grateful and so thankful to have you. When I say I'm excited to be amongst these ladies, it is it is just we're just so grateful to have all of them with us here today we have some wonderful 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 resources for you that is available right here in guilford county and um, we are so thankful to have our list here we have priscilla bravo who is the director of the women's resource center of the ywca and my name is lamisha staten by the way and i am with the partnership for children of guilford county we also have Camilla Dos Santos. She is the program coordinator for the Health Relationships Initiative. We also have April Butler, who is the data analysis, special projects and outcomes manager for the Guilford Child Development here in Guilford County. Also, we have Janet Howard. She is the program director for Bringing Out the Best with UNCG. We're also grateful to have Ms. Kimberly Funderburg. She is the director for the Guilford Parent Academy, which is also through Guilford County Schools. We also have Melanie Garner. She is the NCTSN Treehouse Evaluation Coordinator and Victim Advocate with the Kellen Foundation. And last but not least, we have Ms. Tanya Robinson Caldwell. She is the Parent Services Coordinator with the GCD Regional Child Care Resources and Referral. So as you see today, our virtual town hall series is focusing on families and children. And we are so grateful to have all of you here with us today. Just to share with you some information about the Partnership for Children, we are one of 75 local Smart Star agencies here in North Carolina. And our purpose is to make sure that we are serving the needs of children and families from birth to age five. We also have programs including NC Pre-K, Dolly Parton Imagination Library, and of course, Smart Star programs that are located here throughout Guilford County. You can find us on, on social media at Guilford Kids. Next slide. We also wanted to share with parents that we are still enrolling for NC Pre-K. So we do invite you to log on to our um, website at guilfordchildren.org where you will find our online NC Pre-K application. We do invite you to apply if you have a child that will be four years old before August 31st. Next slide. Okay, so... Um, Yes, thank you. I just wanted to say thank you to um, all the wonderful ladies with us today and uh, everything they're doing for the community. Um, just thank you for being here. And I'm just, this is our address. Uh, I just wanted to mention a couple of things uh, coming up uh, for the second part of the virtual town hall series, which, which is called Working From Home Opportunities. That's gonna be next Wednesday, June 24th on Facebook Live. And then we have um, Elder Abuse Awareness on June 30th. And also I wanted to remind our clients that we have a drive-through every Friday from nine to 12. All you need is a referral from a medical provider or your caseworker. If not, you can come by and I can do a quick intake. Again, that's uh, every Friday, nine through 12, we're providing diapers and basic items for um, babies. Oh, and also adult diapers. Camila. 
Hi, everyone. My name is Camilla Dos Santos, and I am the program coordinator of the Healthy Relationships Initiative. And I'm really grateful for the partnership with the YWCA, as well as the Guilford County Partnership for Children, and just giving us the opportunity to talk a little bit about our mission in Guilford County and beyond. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with the Healthy Relationships Initiative, we typically, typically call ourselves HRI for short. And our mission is to promote happy, healthy, and safe relationships relationships of all kinds. We started back in February 2017 uh, as a partnership between UNC Greensboro and the Phillips Foundation. And our director was a former UNCG counseling professor and now the director of the Center for Youth, Family, and Community Partnerships. And so through HRI, we do focus on relationships of all kinds, but of course our focus here today is on our resources that specifically are for families uh, with young children as well as parents. And so you'll see on the slide up on the screen that we do a lot of different relationship education ranging from couples to self relationships, workplace relationships. Um, and of course with the pandemic, we have a, a shifted all of our in-person programming to online and virtual programming, which which makes it easier for folks to access our resources as well. And so on the next slide, um, you'll see a, a little bit about our HRI events. We do a number of different uh, trainings for professionals, as well as relationship resource ed ed and resources and education for the community. Um, today, I'm gonna talk a little bit about where you can find our Healthy Relationships Initiative resources. And then I'm gonna share some specific resources that could be useful uh, for you today. And so on the next slide, uh, I really wanted to dive into our e-learning center, and that'll be one more slide over, Priscilla, um, our e-learning center. And our e-learning center is where we house all of our online modules and webinars focusing on different relationship topics. Um, and so we've got a number of different resources on there, ranging from our modules that are all designed to be completed in less than one hour, um, and for which you can kind of start and stop at your own pace. So it's not something you need to sit and complete in that full hour. We've got a number of topics ranging um, from different toolkits on uh, healthy relationships for couples and parenting young children. Uh, one of our newer resources that we're just actually going to release is on divorcing with dignity. So there's a lot of different relationship topics that you can find within our e-learning center. Specifically in this pandemic, we've also made a push to kind of highlight some of the topics that are uh, uh, families are dealing with today. So under uh, the upper right tab on the screen, you'll see we have some COVID-19 specific webinars uh, ranging on topics like social distancing, how to set remote work boundaries, um, and perhaps most importantly for this forum, parenting young children in a pandemic. So you can see we've got a wide range of topics there as well. And then finally, our relationship boosters are designed to sort of function as podcasts. So you can tune in on your own time and listen to uh, us talk with different relationship experts on different topics that uh, affect relationships of all kinds. So our HRI e-learning center, which is found on our website at www.guilfordhri.org is a really great place to start to become familiar with what we have in terms of resources. On the next slide, you'll see uh, a little bit more about our toolkits, which I mentioned briefly, but wanted to touch on a little bit more, um, since these are some of our newer resources that we've developed to help families really intentionally focus and dive into different relationship skills. And so the topics available right now for toolkits, um, and one thing to, uh, to note is that these are free and can be downloaded at our website. Uh, we've got topics on toolkits for couples, parenting teenagers, healthy relationships for teens, uh, toolkits with families with young children. And we're also working together with Bringing Out the Best, uh, they'll speak a little bit shortly, on just developing some eBooks for families with young children. So we really have a lot of different resources that are already available that you can connect with now. And then these next couple slides, I'll talk to you about how you can specifically use HRI resources to help deal with specific relationship issues that you might be facing right now. So in preparing for this program today, I thought about maybe some of the more common relationship issues that families and parents might be dealing with right now. And uh, one of the things that we're hearing a lot is uh, 
parents having to cope with conflict and dealing with conflict amongst their own children um, and possibly amongst other children that they've been spending more time with as we all kind of isolate ourselves. Um, and so many parents are dealing with conflict with children at home. And so some different HRI resources that can help support you to help not only mitigate but prevent conflict in the future um, can be, for example, checking out a blog article written by HRI director on how to foster positive sibling relationships or possibly listening to our one hour relationship booster on how to navigate friendship challenges. And we had a school counselor talk with that with us for that one. Um, another useful resource to help parents mitigate conflict with young children could be our HRI toolkit for families of young children. So this is just one example of how you can use a variety of HRI resources to tackle a pretty common issue that we're, uh, many parents are dealing with at home. To give you another example on the next slide, many of us are struggling to cope with stress and finding the balance with all of our changing priorities. And so HRI has developed some resources to help uh, folks cope with that as well, such as a, an infographic designed for parents on how to effectively homeschool in the face of coronavirus. We've also got a relationship booster on how we can maintain a healthy work-life balance both within and outside of the pandemic, um, as well as a webinar, uh, about a one hour webinar on how to effectively set boundaries when working from home. So these are just some examples of how we've got a number of different resources that you can engage with in different ways to help tackle different relationship issues that you might be facing. And finally, I'll sort of close by giving you some options to connect with HRI today so we can go ahead and move on to the next slide. Um, some of the best ways to connect with HRI is to visit our website, www.guilfordhri.org. This is where we house all of our uh, resources ranging from toolkits to webinars, to blog articles, and everything in between. Another good place to kind of stay up to date with what we are uh, sort of unveiling on a day-to-day on a -day basis is on our social media accounts. Um, and you can follow us at Healthy Relationships Initiative, both on Facebook and on Instagram. And that's a really easy way to kind of stay in tune with what we're developing and what we're creating. And finally, we do have a free monthly HRI e-newsletter that reaches almost 2,000 people in our community. Um, and basically through that monthly e-newsletter, e we just keep you connected with some of the more relevant resources and events for that month. We only send that uh, once a month and we don't share your information with others. So if you'd like to sign up for our newsletter today, a great way to do that would be to start by uh, visiting our website and scrolling down to the bottom. Um, Priscilla will share my contact information towards the end of today, uh, but we hope that you've learned a little bit about the Healthy Relationships Initiative and the different resources that we have to serve and uh, promote happy, healthy, and safe relationships of all kinds, but especially in uh, families and parents of young children. So thank you so much for learning a little bit about HRI today. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Camilla. We appreciate you sharing your wonderful resources through the Healthy Relationships Initiative, and we hope everyone will visit their website at guilfordhri.org. Next up, we will have Ms. April Butler with Guilford Child Development. April. Hi, good morning. Good morning. It is such a pleasure to be on here today. Um, my name is April Butler, Data Analysis Special Projects and Outcomes Manager for the Head Start and Early Head Start Services at Guilford Child Development. Um, our mission statement is to help young children and families reach their full potential. So my goal today is to share those services that we um, currently have and we're currently accepting applications for the services, but also share some interesting um, activities and programs that um, we hope parents and families would be interested into. Next slide. So the biggest portion of um, the Head Start and Early Head Start services is our family engagement and ERC services. Um, these, these roles are to support our families and provide them with opportunities and contribute towards their family well-being and um, positive parent-child relationships. So this is essential for families to become involved and engaged as well as school readiness for our children. Next slide, please. So our enrollment process. So for the early Head Start, Head Start services, it's very important to complete an application 
in the enrollment process. Our staff are trained um, heavily all year long to make sure that they have those capabilities of enrolling, whether it's paper, mailing off, and we currently just opened our new online application services on our GCD website. So extremely important that if you are interested and becoming part of our Early Head Start, Head Start program that you apply online or you can call the front desk, which Ms. Priscilla will share my contact information towards the end in order to get in contact with us. For our Head Start program, that is ages three to four, and we do partner with NC Pre-K. For our Early Head Start program, it's ages zero to two, and of course our children turn three in the program. Next slide, please. Now, once you complete the application in the enrollment process and a vacancy becomes available, um, we do currently have a waiting list. And uh, like I stated earlier, we are accepting applications for our current year for Early Head Start and our upcoming school year for Head Start and Early Head Start services. It's extremely important that we re-verify and verify all applications. Our staff, family services specialists, are trained heavily to make sure that we are incorporating the best um, with making sure that the poverty guidelines are definitely identified and making sure we serve the most neediest families. Next slide, please. So the comprehensive services that we provide uh, once you become part of um, our program, we do have mental health and disability services. We do have limited bus transportation. We only serve Head Start um, students for that. Uh, we do have the Family Success and High Point Opportunity Center referrals. Now, and you don't have to be part of Early Head Start Head Start in order to join the Family Success and High Point Opportunities. So even if you would like to get in contact with us and complete an online application for Head Start and Early Head Start, we still will be able to send a referral over um, to the Family Success in Greensboro as well as the High Point Opportunity Center. Um, if you're interested in um, family literacy, GED courses, resume building, um, classes such as that. Um, resources and referrals, we do make sure that we provide um, all detail and information to our families regarding resources. Um, each family is provided a family advocate. That family advocate, make sure you have exactly what you need and provide that health and mental health um, services throughout the school year. Um, the Nurse Family Partnership Unit, we do partner with them and send interagency referrals just to support first-time moms if we find out any relatives or um, parents that advocate parent on parent. If they share that information, we do send that interagency referral to the Nurse Family Partnership Unit under GCD. Um, educational and literacy workshops. Um, it is mandatory for our program to provide opportunities and workshops to our family. So we definitely wanna make sure that we are addressing any educational literacy needs that the family may need. But also our education specialists are trained as education coaches to provide quality services to our teachers. Um, the next bullet is health and nutrition services. Um, there are certain requirements in our program that we want to make sure that our children are up on their EPDST schedules, as well as their immunization shots. But we also provide nutrition services to make sure that family well-being um, related to nutrition um, is supported in the home, as well as making sure it's supported in the classroom. Uh, we do have a partnership with Triad Family Dental, who provides mobile dental services to us. So you won't have to go too far, that mobile dental um, then come straight to the center and provide those services to our early and Head Start children. Next slide, please. So here's the, some summer activity ideas that we share with our families um, once we became remote workers. Um, and create a, a fun summer schedule that fits your home routine. We all have different routines in our home. So some virtual apps online that we share with our families um, are Zern, Epix, Class Dojo, the parent app. Um, we do know that some of the libraries are offering online services. There's Summer Camp Online, uh, Prodigy, and there are some parent workshop series on the eClick website, which is our Early Childhood Knowledge and Learning Center. So um, you don't have to work to get on those parent series. All you do is just register as a parent and they offer a lot of great opportunities to our parents. 
some home activities that are very creative. Um, create a library station, as you can see in the back. My daughter's library is full in effect. <laughs> um, paint canvas crafts, um, site work scrambles, baking activities, movie day or night, Taco Tuesday, some coloring activities. So it's very important for our staff to still offer support to our families with coming up with creative summer activities now that your home has become the summer camp. Next slide, please. GCD has a fatherhood program called Proud Fathers United. Um, they currently meet weekly on the Friday series, and they also offer group app support on the Group Me app. Um, they get ready to have their next event June 21st um, this Sunday. So extremely important that they are still supporting each other as fathers and involving themselves and talking about the stressors of being, whether they are family or individual fathers. So um, if you are interested in the Proud Fathers United group, you are welcome to reach out to Mr. Hooper. He is the fatherhood facilitator and his contact information is below. Next slide, please. And here is our central office location. Um, when you call this phone number, you just ask for the Head Start Early Head Start Services Unit, and they'll get you right in touch with us. And like I said earlier, Ms. Priscilla will be sharing uh, my contact information. Um, and you're more than welcome to follow us on Facebook, Gift for Child Development. Um, we keep all our services and newsletters in of the things that we are sharing in the community and that we are providing to our families. And once again, thank you so much. Thank you, April. We appreciate all of the information you were able to share with us for Guilford Child Development. And we do hope that if we have any families watching that would like to apply for Head Start and Early Head Start, you see the information there on your screen and you can also visit their website. It's guilfordchilddev.org. Thank you, April. Thank you. Welcome. Next up, we will have Ms. Janet Howard. She is the program director for Bringing Out the Best here in Guilford County. Janet. Good morning. Uh, thank you guys for having me and thank everybody out there for joining. Um, we are an early intervention program that uh, provides family-centered and community-based services targeting children ages birth to five who are in, not yet in kindergarten um, that might have social, emotional, uh, behavioral challenges. Our goal is really to increase the number of children in Guilford County that are healthy and ready to succeed um, when they enter kindergarten. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, normally what we, what we would be doing is getting referrals from pediatricians and parents and therapists and teachers and whoever uh, for us to go out and visit in childcare centers or to do some parenting. And we, it's, this is a free service and we would come and sort of check out what's going on, do an observation and figure out how we can help. Can we provide coaching to the teacher? That will be ongoing. It wouldn't have to be just a one-time thing. Um, we can do some parenting in the home. And then we would also provide interventions and referrals if necessary to other places in the community, such as um, speech therapy or occupational therapy or whatever. Um, but right now with the pandemic, we are not doing any visiting. So we, and, and as some of you may know, child care centers are not really letting people in anyway. So we are trying to move everything or have moved everything to virtual. Uh, so right now you don't even have to have a referral. Anyone in Guilford County that has a child age five or under can give us a call or on our website, there's a place to click just to send to fill out a quick form so I have basic information and we will contact you and anybody can have um, consultations via phone, email, or we can do Zoom or, or FaceTime or whatever suits the family or the teacher. Um, our website also, we are adding resources. We've had some virtual trainings on there, mainly for teachers, but we had a couple of things for parents as well that are still up. And um, we do have social media going. We have Instagram and Facebook. So um, um, I'm not sure. I think we might put things on there three or four times a week. Uh, tips for, for parenting during the pandemic, tips for parenting in general or understanding development of young children. Um, we also, like Camilla said for HRI, we also have a monthly newsletter that Camilla helps us with. And that comes out once a month. And um, same thing, lots of tips and, and resources available there as well. Easy to sign up. You would just go to our website to do that. 
Um, next slide. So here's my contact information. My, my email is on there, our website, um, bringingoutthebest.uncg.edu. And then there's also, um, if you can click on your screen, there's also a um, link there for our new, to sign up for our newsletter, but you can get to that from our website. And one other thing I do wanna say, we're hoping at some point, whenever we get back to normal, whatever that might be, that we'll have a maker space available in our office for teachers mainly, but also some parents to come and make interventions. So now we bring interventions to people like, um, like a visual schedule or a sand timer or something to use. And we're hoping that people will start coming and making them themselves with our guidance, of course, but we can help you make those things and take them. And that would be free of charge. I did wanna say just one thing that I think is really helpful right now during all of this craziness um, is to keep routine in place. April mentioned that everybody has routines in their home. It's really crucial, especially for young children to keep a routine. That doesn't mean you have to follow the clock and look at do everything at the same exact time of day every day, but to follow the same order of events. So children in particular know what to, to know what's coming next. That predictability makes everyone feel really safe and you'll get a lot better uh, cooperation from children and more independence out of them if they know what to expect every day. So that's my tip for the pandemic. <laughs> Thank you, Janet, for that. And thank you for reminding us about the importance of routines for children during this time. Even though we're at home, it's very, very important to make sure they stay with the routine. And we appreciate the services and resources that you have at Bringing Out the Best and Parents. Please, if you have any questions about their program, have any questions about social, emotional, or behavioral questions or concerns, feel free to contact them. You see their website and telephone number to contact them for more information. Thank you, Janet, and happy birthday today as well. We'll now have Ms. Kimberly Funderburg. We're excited to have her today. She is from the Guilford Parent Academy um, with Guilford County Schools. Ms. Funderburg. Hello, everyone. I am Kimberly Funderburg, Director of Guilford Parent Academy, and I am so happy to be with this panel of professionals today. So we can go ahead and start with some of the things I like to share about what Guilford Parent Academy um, is doing. And so I'll first share our mission is that is to work to bridge the gap for student success through family and community engagement. Of course, we want to see our families thrive and we want to make sure that our parents have what they need to help their students. But we have expanded our mission to work with more community agencies to develop more outreach and resources for our families. And so that aligns with our vision, which is to empower parents and families to cultivate a better quality of life. Next slide, please. So how does GPA help parents and families thrive? We do that in a number of ways and we provide resources and support through our GPA on the go, which pre-pandemic pre is where we went out to where families are and we provided workshops and events and activities that would align with the work of GPA, which would be to enhance all kinds of resources to them, um, which could span from student help, homework help, um, entrepreneurship, adult literacy, retirement, and much, much more. And that's where our community partners come in. We have enhanced our community partnership base to almost 200 community partners as of this year to really expand our resources to our parents. Next slide. So I'll talk a little bit about our online digital resources and homework help. And one of the ways that we share this resource with our parents is through BrainFuse. BrainFuse is a free online tutor that our families can access 24 hours a day, seven days a week, free of charge. You can be in your PJs and you can log on to BrainFuse and get help for your students as well as our parents. And our parents find help with our BrainFuse job now. So in Job Now, there's a resource in there that assists parents with resume writing 
as well as job search. There's also a component in there that will help first time citizens to the USA to make sure that they have what they need to be documented. We also use an online resource such as Connect with Kids and Family Engagement on Demand. Both of these resources share videos about tough topics um, such as the bullying or such as cyber internet safety or just general conversations that parents should have with their students. These two resources provide videos on how to start those tough conversations and how to engage with their students on a much healthy level. We also have ramped up our YouTube channel. Um, we've had the YouTube channel for about three or four years now, but this year we've really ramped up our YouTube with several engagement videos just to keep our parents learning as well as providing resources to our students. And this YouTube channel also allows us to go um, actually have our um, workshops that we have in our course catalog to be accessible to parents. So for example, we've partnered with the Children's Home Society where the director there has done a recorded session about parenting with purpose. We also have a video for our parents that allows them to learn about the new math for high school students, our MVP math. There's also a session there for middle school math, our open up math, and then elementary math, which is our Eureka math. There's also several videos on different topics that link what the district is doing with the resources that's available to them. So we've really ramped up our YouTube channel so that our families can have access to information at their fingertips. Next slide. We are fortunate to have on our team an exceptional children parent liaison. One in seven students in Guilford, parent, in Guilford County Schools are receiving exceptional children services. So when you look at the numbers, that's roughly 10,000 students among our 72,000 students that receive exceptional children services. So on our team, we have a parent liaison that works as a first point of contact for our families receiving these services. And she works to assist families in navigating the individualized education plan that our families that receive those services have to have. So we are fortunate to have someone on our team that provides resources to our families as well as facilitate teacher and parent workshops. Next slide. So another part of the work of Guilford Parent Academy is community partner referrals. And we do this in a process where a family may need screening and they end up coming to us. We would then work with that family to assess that need and then make a community referral that would align with what that partner specializes in. And we then too will follow up with the family to make sure that they have received the services that they need. Um, one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is the fact that we've expanded our community partnerships so that when we have a family that comes to us, we're able to streamline what they need and those services to our community partners. Next slide. We always, we always wanna make sure that families are connected with what we're doing as well as what the district is doing. And so we encourage our families to sign up for our free GPA digital resources. And they can do that from the homepage www.gcsnc.com and they will see that we have a direct link at the bottom of the homepage listed there under Parent Academy. Next slide. So we'll talk about our summer virtual family engagement activities. I think we are well aware now that anything we've done pre-pandemic that was face-to-face, -face, we're now having to do virtual. And so a couple of things that um, the Parent Academy is working on this summer is that we will be supporting the district summer reading initiative, 
where students who read 900 minutes over the summer will get an opportunity to visit Kersey Valley. And so to help that initiative, GPA is offering free books to families. And so once we get that up and rolling, which will be towards the end of this month, our families will be able to access a form. They'll submit their information, what, what grade level their child is on, how many books they need, and they'll send us their address. We will ship free books out to our families so they don't even have to come out of their homes. Another thing that we are working to do this summer is a family fun game night. And so we are trying to make sure that our families continue to learn, but they also have fun doing that. Another initiative is our grooming pantry, which will focus on our male students from ages five to 12. We have a community partner that would love to offer free haircuts. And so we know during the pandemic, we have to take precautions of social distancing and make sure that we are protecting our families and ourselves. And so we're looking at ways of how we can have our students receive free haircuts and have our dads and moms join us to get more information about us as well as our community partners. We do plan to do virtual family field trips where we will take our families on a journey so we know that some of our families, especially our Title I families, may not have the opportunity to actually take a vacation once things get back to normal or some sort of normalcy. So we're going to take a look at how we can bring the experience to our families virtually. We're going to incorporate a family workout. We have someone on our team that is really health motivated and we're going to bring some unique workouts to the family virtually using things out of their homes. So we know if they don't have a weight set or if they don't have jump ropes or um, the resistance bands, we can use some things that can be found in the home that will allow our families to work out and get some exercise. Another thing we plan on doing this summer is a virtual welcome event for our new pre-K and kindergarten families. So the idea here is for us to build a connection and a strong relationship for our new families who are joining Guilford County Schools for the first time. We'll welcome them and we'll share some information about us as well as all the resources that Guilford County Schools provides for them. Next slide. So we always tell people, just ask us about GPA and how we can help you. And we also invite our families to join GPA. It's free. Um, they can do so at this link here. They'll have access to the digital resources and they'll also have access to our newsletter. Um, and here is also a list of our team. Of course, I mentioned to you our EC parent liaison but we do have a wonderful team that is always ready to assist our families if we get the call or if we get an email. You can also find us on Facebook and YouTube at Guilford Parent Academy. So thank you so much for allowing me to share information about how Guilford Parent Academy can help our families thrive. Thank you so very much for sharing all of those wonderful resources through Guilford Parent Academy. We hope that our parents that are watching, you will check out their information, um, the resources and support for families, the online digital resources and homework assistance available, the exceptional children's parent liaison that they have, any summer virtual family engagement activities, all of those wonderful activities. Please be sure to check out their website. You see the contact information here. We thank you again, Ms. Funderburg, for joining us today for the Virtual Town Hall series. Next joining us is Melanie Garner to share all of the resources and wonderful information from the Kellen Foundation. Melanie. <laughs> Sorry, thank you, Lumisha and Priscilla for having me um, and the Kellen Foundation and all of us. My name is Melanie Garner. I'm the ch a child and family advocate and uh, the evaluation coordinator for our NCTSN project. Next slide. The Kellen Foundation's mission statement I have here, the Kellen Foundation builds resilient children, families, and adults through behavioral health, mental health services, victim advocacy, and community outreach. We are the only nationally recognized community-based behavioral health center in the area of trauma and resiliency in the state of North Carolina, other than Duke University. 
and that's with our partnership with the NCTSM. Um, right now, we have lots of virtual things going on that we are super excited about. Uh, we have our virtu virtual village um, calendar on our website, so you can uh, visit that and check out everything we have coming up. Um, the virtual village is an ongoing series of support groups that will help build resiliency in our community during the pandemic. If you're interested in checking that out or joining one of those, you can check out the website at the bottom of the screen. Some great things um, all the way from kiddos zero to five. We have groups um, up to adults. So next slide. Another thing that we have going on right now that's um, really fun and exciting and it's spread love, spread hope. This is a community art showcase that we're hoping to um, to exhibit once we're back in our physical site and reopened. Um, so kids and teens age zero to 18 can submit artwork um, to the Kellen Foundation. Um, the steps are at the bottom and we're asking that you um, paint, draw, use whatever means, um, but just um, submit an artwork, submit artwork that says, uh, you know, what does hope and love look like to you right now during this pandemic? Um, and so, like I said, we'll be um, exhibiting those once our physical office is back open. So we would love to have your kids and teens um, send in some of their fabulous work. Next slide. And I added this, um, this is the NCTSN, comes from the NCTSN website. There are some phenomenal tools and resources, um, national resources for just about anything and everything that you um, could want. Need, but I included um, some fact sheets for parents, fact sheet for youth, high school and college age students, um, in, in particular during this um, pandemic, coping in hard times, fact sheet for community organizations and leaders, and also for school staff as well. So I encourage you to really um, take a look at the NZTSN website because there are so many tools and um, resources on here. Um, and the website can also be, um, the NCTSN can be found through our Kellen Foundation um, resources tab. All right, next slide. And I also wanted to include this um, as well on our Kellen Foundation website, which is under the COVID-19 resources tab. We have um, local resources um, ranging in from hotlines, food, housing, financial assistance, uh, mental health, activity, activities for zero to 18 years old, um, and also resources for parents, teachers, and educators. And this is outside, not, not just the Kellen Foundation, this is resources from our community that anyone can access. Next slide. slide. And lastly, I just are, also wanted to throw this in here. Um, are, these are some great resources for summer camps in Greensboro and High Point. Um, and Triad Moms on Main is a fantastic um, resource for everything. I mean, they put out a weekly um, newsletter on Facebook that you can check out, but there are some phenomenal camps um, free as well as camps that um, do cost, you know, minimal to, you know, different fees, but um, check those out because there are some different activities and they're always listing um, great ideas for home as well as outside if you're looking to get outside. Next slide. And I just wanted to um, just read this Children's Mental Health Matters. Um, we're focusing on families and children right now, and especially during this pandemic, it's important. Um, I think like Janet said, to keep a routine um, and just remember, I'm gonna read this quote, most young kids will remember how their family home felt during the coronavirus panic more than anything specific about the virus itself. Um, and that's from New York-based clinical psychologist, Dr. Re Rebecca Kennedy. So just remember, um, you know, things that you're doing at home right now and keeping those routines and finding fun things and fun activities for your children um, to do and get involved with. It's, it's super important right now. And just being, you know, having that open line of communication. At the bottom, you can find our Kellen Foundation email, our phone number, as well as our website. And all of these resources are on our website. We have various tabs um, that you can click on and you know, we'll link you to, to multiple um, local agencies as well and activities. And last slide. And once again, here's our website and um, some of our Kellen staff. Um, thank you to all medical professionals and first responders. We support you. Stay safe, love um, from the Kellen Foundation. So just sending out our love to everyone and to all of our partner agencies. And thank you again, um, Lumisha and Priscilla for having us. 
Um, that was short and sweet, but please check out the Kellen Foundation's website for more information. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Melanie. We appreciate all of the information and the resources that the Kellen Foundation provides to Guilford County. And we also thank you for the resources that you have provided through ECTSN, which is the National Child Traumatic Stress Network. We appreciate all of the virtual villages that you provided, as well as the information for the summer camps for both Greensboro and High Point and resources available through Triad Moms on Main. So thank you so very much for all of the information you provided us with. Last but not least, bringing us home is Ms. Tanya Robinson Caldwell. She is with the Gilbert Child Development Regional Child Care Resources and Referral. Tanya. Tanya, can you hear us? Now I couldn't get on mute. There you go. Uh, Thank you, and uh, my name is Tanya Robinson Caldwell, and I am, as um, Lamisha mentioned, I'm the uh, Parent uh, Services Coordinator uh, for the Regional Child Care Resources. And we are a nonprofit uh, child care agency that works with families in the community um, to help ensure that all children um, have access to high quality and affordable um, early learning programs, as well as school age opportunities and experiences um, which enable them to succeed in school and life. Um, you can um, reach me again uh, with the contact and it will be at the end of the presentation, um, along with the Regional Child Care Resources and Referral, which I will um, provide uh, information on the later slide, but uh, we also work with providers in case there are some providers that may also have a licensed child care. We work closely with providers and um, providing um, training that's required by the Division of Child Development. And um, you can also contact me and I uh, will connect you on our website for Ayana um, O'Neill. Um, also uh, with um, the information that I will be sharing with you will mainly pertain to assisting parents um, that are needing childcare or referral options or resources. Next slide, please. Okay, the Regional Child Care um, Resource and Referral uh, provide personalized referrals to licensed child care providers in Guilford, Randolph, and Rockingham counties. We are considered uh, Region 11. Uh, these referrals are not recommendations when we send them out to, um, the, um, to you as a parent. Um, as a parent or guardian, it is your responsibility to select the child care providers you believe uh, will be best for your children. Um, and let us help you find quality child care um, that meets your family's needs and preferences. Uh, feel free to call us and I have my contact number is 336-369-5021. Um, also, we have an online presence um, and that link is also within the PowerPoint. You may also um, visit us at the Gifford Child Development website. Um, next slide, please. Choosing childcare is the most important decision that families make as, um, and it can be difficult to find reliable information. So we refer to local childcare providers. Um, we also provide information for state licensing requirements, and we encourage you to access childcare licensing information, uh, which we've provided a link for you um, in reference to including subs um, substantiated complaints or access to any public files pertaining to licensed facilities. And again, we are not a licensing agency, but we work closely with the Division of Child Development uh, to provide parents with uh, the appropriate uh, referrals and information that is needed. Uh, you may during this time also um, view our website, um, the resource and referral website at Gift for Child Development for any COVID-19 information and updates from the governor, as well as the uh, health um, or any others pertaining to um, providers' child care. Um, we provide information on where to, um, where to get help paying for child care, which would be your financial. Next slide, please. Um, 
for quality child care and high quality child care is consistently showing to have positive benefits for children. So we, um, our position is to uh, make sure that you as a parent or the community is aware of what those guidelines are and qualities. Um, high star ratings, thus the program license is posted and programs have a higher star rating as applicable, which means better quality care for your child. Um, these are some of the things that parents would, um, that we try to encourage parents to understand and have a good concept of what it, when you're placing your child in a program. Few children per staff and small numbers of children for each staff member allows each child to receive individual attention and care. Um, you also want to consider small group size, uh, which promotes in, uh, nurturing and secure selling. Development appropriate curriculums. The program uses a plan to encourage learning and involve children in activities that suit their age and developmental stages. Positive interaction, which is um, communicates, uh, where children communicates with and learn from staff and each other. Um, consistent supervision of children, ensuring that each staff member is responsible for the same um, children each day. This helps parents when you're going out to do your visits or to try and determine a program, uh, some of the things that you uh, will need to uh, include or be aware of as you go out. Um, next slide, please. The quality child care continues. Um, it also includes well-trained, um, dedicated staff, uh, which has education and training in child development and early education. Um, the program has a low, uh, and the program itself has a little staff turnover. Um, this information uh, we provide as a brochure from the Division of Child Development, that's a um, statewide uh, campaign. So we send these uh, types of information out to you. Um, if it's by online, then it's a, a, where you are able to print it. Um, if we send you written materials, um, then it is a pamphlet. And at this time, since we are all virtually um, working from home, then this information um, is normally sent out to you by an email where you'll have access of downloading it or viewing. Um, next slide, please. And how to choose quality child care continues is consider the different types of care and I included in the listing uh, regulated child care so that you would know those that are required to have state license, um, your licensed child care centers, licensed family child care home, developmental daycare center, religious sponsored child care facilities, um, as a parent um, coordinator and a referral specialist, we do uh, explain that in detail um, so that there's not a question when you go out to visit to know what your expectations should be. Programs that are not required to be regulated, which includes your part day preschool, school age childcare, drop in short term career recreation programs, and legally exempt family childcare homes. And the website is. Tanya, you there? Tanya? Lumisha, do you want to finish for her? Or okay. I don't know if she has to go out and come back in or yeah i think we may have lost her for yeah. a minute Let's see. um well we we do appreciate we do apologize we've had um just a short um okay all right well just to finish up um for regional child care resource and referral until we're able to get tanya back as you see, in, um, for paying for child care resources for parents here in Guilford County, um, there are a couple of resources. If you live in Greensboro, 
um, you may contact the Guilford County Department of Social Services and you see their contact information there, um, as well as how to access their services to apply for child care voucher um, information for Greensboro and High Point. Also, sometimes the regional child care and resources and referral will have opportunities for scholarships for parents. Um, so if you have questions about any scholarships and help for paying for child care, please contact Cornisha and you will see her information. Her contact information is 336-369-5024. Next slide. Thank you. Um, okay. There you go. There Thank you, Lamisha. Um, I'm sorry, but the no uh, lost connection. Um, again, my name is Tanya and you can visit us on um, at the um, www.giffordchilddevelopment.org. Um, my email is available to you at Tanya at giffordchilddev.org. And my contact number is 336-369-5021. We do provide on our, um, you will find on our website, the online link for um, doing online searches for child care. We also have summer programs uh, listed um, and resources. We work with all um, programs and agencies throughout Gifford County. As I mentioned, we also uh, serve uh, the Randolph and Rockingham. And I'm assuming, um, Lamisha, did you mention the scholarships and the DSS information for financial? Yes. Um, we are available uh, when parents uh, reach, when you contact us, that we are able to provide you with other resources that you um, may have uh, or qualify for, such as um, free or those programs that are income-based. Um, so we provide not only just to licensed child care, um, uh, exempt programs, but also we make sure that you are aware of registrations for kindergarten, uh, those programs for pre-K, pre early Head Start, Head Start, or half-day programs if you or, or either resources if you are seeking employment as well. So we are a referral service, um, but which does child care referrals, but we are very familiar with the community and looking forward to continuing to serve you. Please feel free to reach out to uh, myself. Um, Kanisha also is available as well. So we're looking forward to working with you, especially those coming up for kindergarten or registration. But view our website for any updates on the COVID um, uh, licensing and regulations or questions or any information that um, is shared by the governor. We will make sure you have that information. And thank you. It's been a pleasure of being on and I apologize for the disconnection with the um, internet. That is certainly fine. We thank you, Tanya, for joining us and Thank you for sharing all of the information and resources that are available through the child care resources and referral here in Guilford County. Um, and please do, if you parents, if you have any questions about on how to, what to look for in a quality child care center, um, any questions that you might have, please give them a call at 369-5021. As you will see, we have all of our wonderful presenters information here on the screen for you to contact them. If you have any questions, I also want to just mention before we end for parents, there is also another wonderful resource called Sesame Street in Communities that is available for you to log in. The website is sesamestreetsincommunities.org. When you get to the website, you will be able, even for ch any childcare providers that might be watching, when you get to the website, you can either log in as a parent or a provider. There you can find parents, you can find wonderful activities to do at home with your children, family-friendly activities, videos. There are professional development opportunities for any early childhood providers that may be watching as well. So definitely check them out, sesamestreetincommunities.org. We sincerely, on behalf of myself with the partnership, Priscilla Bravo with the YWCA High Point. We are so grateful for the partnership that we have established and for these wonderful ladies, Healthy Relationships Initiative, Guilford Child Development, Bringing Out the Best, Guilford Parent Academy, Kellen Foundation, and GCD's Regional Child Care Resources and Referral 
please contact them if you have any questions. We are so grateful for having you today. Thank you for joining us for our second virtual town hall series called Focusing on Families and Children. We are so grateful to you. Please contact us if you have any questions. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.